Flagship offerings have huge shoes to fill. It is a reflection of the brand's potential in almost every domain. Take for example the Audi Q7. With an unmatched blend of phenomenal presence, comfort and luxury, it has been the choice of wheels for film stars and business tycoons alike. It doesn't come as a surprise then that it has tasted great success over the years. But when you have such high benchmarks already set, it is that much more difficult to go one up on it. This new Q8 has been given the Herculean task of going beyond the Q7 to be Audi's new flagship. The question then is, can it deliver? Over the past few years, the cars that Audi has brought to India haven't quite been pioneering in terms of design. The Q5 that was launched a few years back was, dare I say, a little bit unimaginative. The A6 on the other hand was a good coalition of elegance and sharpness but clinged on to its predecessor's cues a bit too much for a liking. This Q8 is different. Although it retains the typically Audi elements, it is presented in a much more fashionable and modern day package. Starting from the front, the Q8 follows the new trend of cars being fitted with a massive grille. But unlike some of the BMWs, this one doesn't look all that unnatural. In fact, the grille sits flush in the front end, the headlamps are sleek and the large air dams give it a sense of sportiness. But above all, what I really like is the fact that there are no chrome elements on the front end except for the Audi Insignia. The Q8 is quite unique in its side profile as well. Unlike most other coupe SUV roof lines that start tapering right from the B-pillar itself, this one tapers gradually towards the back, culminating into a sharply raked out C-pillar. This essentially makes more headroom for the passengers at the back. It also gets split-ended alloy wheels and frameless doors that add a sense of sportiness to the overall side profile. When you look at the Q8 from the back, it's hard not to be reminded of the Lamborghini Urus, especially thanks to that sharp cut on the tailgate. And that gloss black applique is reminiscent of the old Quattro Rally cars. Overall, although the Q8 too has typically Audi elements, they are presented in a more fashionable and modern day package. The interior of the Q8 is quite a mixed bag. There are a lot of things that work in its favour, but quite a few that don't quite meet the expectations of a 1.5 crore rupee car. For example, the overall layout of the dashboard is achingly similar to the A6, a car that costs half as much. Now, I personally would have loved to see a bit more exclusive interior. But Audi has tried to redeem itself by giving numerous inlay and upholstery options. Like a lot of luxury cars out there, the Q8 also gets three screens. The first one behind the steering wheel is the Audi Virtual Cockpit. Now this one is extremely informative and easy to use. The Q8 that we have on test today also gets the heads-up display. The infotainment screen in the center is responsive to touch and has good resolution. But it misses out on gesture control like some of the BMWs. The third screen at the bottom is for the automatic climate control and a few other settings. Although this one gets haptic feedback, I still prefer traditional knobs and buttons. You simply cannot use the screen without moving your eyes away from the road. The rear seat of the Q8 is amply spacious, with the driver seat set as per my position. As you can see, I have more than sufficient leg and knee room. In fact, unlike most other coupe SUVs, I have decent enough of headroom here as well and that is down to the way the car is being designed. The seat is not good enough for three adults but can fit two adults and a kid in the center in quite decent comfort. I'm glad that the Q8 isn't a seven-seater. Frankly, you'd rarely see the third row of such cars being occupied, not to mention it usually doesn't rank high on the comfort factor. The Q8 is high on the practicality cushion too. It's over 600 litres of boot means there's enough and more space for your luggage. The loading lip is a bit high though. If that still isn't enough for you, you can even slide the second row forward to make a little more space.
Audi has already announced that they will not have diesel powered cars on sale starting April onwards. In line with that plan, the Q8 has only been launched with a 55 TFSI badge. Now that is Audi's peak for a 3 litre V6 turbo that makes 335 horses and 500 Nm. Considering its 2.1 ton weight, the engine has a lot of car to pull. But once you're on the move, you don't quite feel the weight. Gaining speed is a rather effortless affair and there is ample of torque right from lower end of the rev range. Now that makes it amply quick too. 0 to 100 comes in under 6 seconds and that is quite impressive considering its 2.1 ton weight. The Q8 also impresses in terms of refinement and composure. Even when you give it the beans to make a quick overtaking maneuver, the engine doesn't quite feel uncomfortable or noisy inside the cabin. In fact, it does its duty in an extremely calm and unassuming manner. Just like all the other Audis, the Q8 II comes with driving modes. Switching from comfort to dynamic does make the engine feel a bit more eager, but it still doesn't exude a sense of thrill. And that feeling is somewhat magnified given how well the car drives around a series of bends. The optional all-wheel steering, the central locking differential and all other technological wizardry works together to ensure the car feels superbly planted, especially for its size. Body roll is well contained and the tyres provide oodles of grip too. Dynamic mode adds some weight to the steering which further enhances confidence. The Q8's air suspension also does a good job of cushioning most ruts and potholes despite the fact that a test car was fitted with 285 by 45 section rubber wrapped around 21 inch wheels. Brought into India via the CBU route, the Q8 is priced at 1.34 crore rupees. That pricing is a bit questionable considering some of the other cars you can buy in that range. But if you leave that aside, there's a lot to like about the Q8. It looks absolutely stunning, it impresses in the space and comfort departments, it is refined and it rides like a dream. Will it sell as well as the Q7? Surely not, and Audi is mindful of that fact but it does set new benchmarks as Audi's flagship SUV.